Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my, <laughs> some frustrations I'm having with the photo. And the truth is, the frustrations are not born out of any capability or lack thereof in Luminar. Um, it's really that I'm completely on the verge of indecision about every move that I'm making on a photo. Uh, and, you know, I don't really know if it's going to give you any help or guidance in terms of editing your own photos. I hope that it does. Uh, but I do a lot to this photo. In fact, I'm on layer three now, and I'm at like 21 or so filters deep um, over those three layers. So it's just a lot going on, um, and I still don't know if I like it. And that's really what it comes down to is, um, you know, I think it's important to have an idea of what you want to do when you start editing a photo and err in that direction, right? It doesn't have to be a linear path. Um, my issue with this one is I started in a direction um, and then I started changing the direction, but I'd already had so much work. I didn't want to give up what I'd done. And so I, I could probably get to the, my current, um, status, if you will, my current look on the photo, uh, in a less circuitous way or route, but, uh, it is what I did, what it is. So let me walk through that. Here's the photo. It was sunrise in Prague. I was on the Charles bridge. It's a gloriously beautiful play. I mean, it's like, to me, like Paris um, you know, obviously I haven't been in everywhere, but it's on my list as they say. Um, but Paris is like stunningly beautiful. Prague is pr in my opinion, like pretty much right next to Paris in terms of how beautiful it is. Stunning city. Anyway, um, on the Charles bridge and what I was looking for was like a beautiful sunrise. I had some nice light and stuff, but the sunrise was kind of behind me. And this was, I think a little bit right before sunrise. You can see it's still kind of bluish blue hour. And that's my photo. The lights were still on. Um, I shot at uh, you know decently tight aperture, so I got a nice little starburst on all the lights. It was fairly empty, so not a lot of foot traffic because it was early. It was sunrise, and what I wanted to do is make a beautiful sunrise scene, uh, but I wasn't sure what that meant, and so I went into it and got one thing and ended up with another. So here's where I am. Wow, huh? Very different. Um, and I still don't know if I like it, to be honest. And I don't know how to tell you to figure out how, um, what to do with your photos other than you have to please yourself first. Like, that's something I learned a long time ago because I'd follow people that were like famous or great at photography or just maybe I like their photos. And uh, I'd say, ooh, I want to do that. And so I found like I was often doing things because I, I thought, well, gosh, if you know Bob's photos are so pretty and people like him so much, I'll make mine look like his. And uh, then mine will be pretty and they like my photos, right? Um, and, and then I decided, like, I just don't really give a crap about that. Um, sure, I want people to like my photos, but I want to make myself happy first with my photo before I try to make everybody else happy. Because if you're chasing some likes or whatever it is, I find uh, um, it's, it's not being authentic, right? I'm not being myself and doing what I want to do. And Oh, so I think this is what I want to do. I'm not going for any uh, particular person's look. I just wanted a, a beautiful sunrise on the Charles Bridge. So let me dive into what I've been doing, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you how I got here. And I don't even know if this is the end state, but this is where I am. Let's dive in. Okay, so here we are. Now the base photo is that, um, and this is with the develop filter. As you know, I can't turn that off. And by the way, I've spent a, a good hour on this photo. Still not sure I'm happy with it, but... Um, I could make a really long video about this and we would both like be bored to tears. So I'm gonna roll through some of these filters, hopefully kind of quick so I don't drag this out for too long. Um, basic start here with uh, some contrast, highlights and shadows, just trying to get control of the light. Uh, Accent AI was next, gave a nice little bump of brightness to the foreground. Brilliance and warmth, right? That brought it up a little bit. And by the way, um, this first layer, I was going for more of a blue hour look because it was blue hour and it wasn't until I got further along that I decided I wanted it to be more of a golden hour look, which is one of the reasons I've taken so long in the photo because I keep changing sort of what I want to do. Um, and that's normal, right? Like sometimes I know exactly, most time actually, I know exactly what I want. And sometimes I'm just a willy nilly, you know, like indecisive um, person. So um, today's one of those days. Uh, tone came along and as you can see, I darkened the photo a bit. I took smart tone down and highlights and things like that, added a little bit of contrast. Uh, Golden Hour uh, was next, and that was trying to warm up that scene a little bit. It's getting too blue in the sky. Uh, mostly though, as you can see, that really impacted the, the lamppost. 
I kind of like that. Um, I mean, it's overdone right now and it's gonna change anyway, so don't worry about it. Uh, color balance. Um, one of my favorite filters, but it was a very subtle touch here. Uh, in fact, I think it was just, yeah, mid-tones. I don't know if I, yeah, a little bit on the highlights, right? Just to get a little bit more warmth in the highlights uh, and the mid-tones. Saturation and vibrance, I was looking at it and thinking, it's way too much, so I, I took down the saturation. Image radiance, I said, I'm gonna do a little romantic glow, I'm gonna do that fun, kind of moody, beautiful look, and I added it, and as you can see, it does pop the colors a bit. Um, I lifted the shadows, I didn't mess with saturation or warmth, but if you look at the before, and the after it really has a big impact. Um, I like it, it creates a little bit more dramatic and moody and kind of romantic look, um, but it adds a lot of shadow um, and it does kind of pop the color a little bit, so just keep that in mind. HSL here, that was to take back down some of those colors. Uh, and then split toning here, I said, you know, I'm gonna warm this up a little bit, get a little bit more of that sunrise look, and there it was, and then I had a vignette. Um, and I put on the vignette and I said, Boom, I'm done. I am done with this photo. That was great, Jim. Way to spend 15 minutes on a photo. Um, and then I set it aside. I saved it as a Luminar file because I was like, eh, well, am I done? Am I really done? Am I truly done? I don't know. So um, the truth is I wasn't. So I came back and I said, well, let me add another layer. Let me get some filters. I think I'm gonna go a little warmer. I mean, it was sunrise. I like the warmer tones here. So I'm gonna go that direction, Jim. Way to change direction. So, Brilliance and warmth, hey, you know, hey, it got more brilliant and warm. Uh, you can see the warmth, I went really heavy there. So uh, that was a massive change. And as you can see, I'm going from the blue to the warm colors. A lot of that blue is disappearing. And that's where, you know, as I said, for this layer, I said, I'm really, I think I'm gonna go on the warm sunrise or golden hour kind of look. Um, next was cross-processing. I used Tokyo, sort of a gentle application there. Then I used photo filter. I don't actually use this one a lot, but if you take a look at it, it made a nice little impact on the photo. Um, you just pick the hue and the saturation, then you move the slider for the amount. Um, and it really, again, it was all about just creating some warmth. And this is, um, this layer, when I said I'm gonna go kind of golden, this is a layer where I started just throwing stuff at it, to be honest, because I wasn't sure how I was gonna get, get there because my initial thought was stick golden on, uh, hour on there and just warm it all up. And I did that at first and I didn't like it. It was just a big orange kind of saturated mess. So I did these other steps first, and then here's Golden Hour, and it's very gentle, but it added a nice little bump of warmth. Um, prior to all these other filters coming, it was a lot more blue, so if I stuck Golden Hour on it, I really had to push it uh, heavily. You know, I had to take that amount of Golden Hour really to the right to get any impact on the photo, and it just wasn't looking good. Um, adjustable gradient. As you can see, that was about adjusting the light. So. Uh, let me go to the bottom here. I took the exposure down and I added a lot of warmth. And then for the bottom, I took the exposure up, added some contrast, and actually cooled it off a little bit. So there's the before and the after for adjustable gradient. Love that filter. It's in my top 10 if you saw that video. Um, and then one thing here was really bugging me and that's this building in the background. It's just become a, you know, a neon, a glowing orange neon mess. And it's so overwhelming, I gotta take care of it. So. I just went in and dropped saturation and then brushed it into that building, took care of it. So at this point, I was like, you know what? I like this warm golden hour look. So let me turn that layer off. There it was before, and now looking at that, I, I still like that one. That's why I said I'm undecided. Uh, that's the beauty of Luminar, to be honest, right? You can do so much and, and make them so different that uh, it can be complicated to pick your favorites, right? Anyway, so that was where we were before this layer, and now we're much warmer. So. I was in this mode, and again, I'm going dramatic and moody and kind of romantic or whatever, so I was like, well, let me go to the next layer and add some stuff. Uh, and this is a kind of a fine tuning layer. I went and added structure, and I wanted to bring up the, the cobblestones on the bridge to create a little bit of that crunchiness, so I just brushed those in with some structure, just like that, and then I added structure again, and this time I went negative structure. And this is the trick I talk about all the time where you go negative and if you want to boost it, I didn't boost this time, but I went negative by 50 and all it does is soften up the details. Now normally I'll do that in the sky or even in the water, but this time I added it even around the edge of the frame to create a little bit of almost a vignette. So um, I just wanted to soften up more and more because I'm creating more of that kind of that hazy morning kind of look. And so almost a, a vignette except for the cobblestones and some of the buildings um, is how I applied that negative structure, just to smooth it out and soften it up. Um, and I like that. So um, Dodge and Burn was next. 
And that was about this piece right here. Boom, um, as you can see, it just made it a lot darker. I, I basically went in and burned it, which is the darken. Took the brush, made it 75, and just darkened it. However, it's very orange now because um, it already was orange because everything is looking orange. Uh, when I darken it, the color shows up a whole lot more. So I took the saturation and vibrance filter and I said, take that down and I brushed it in right there. Um, so that was it. At this point, I was done except for an erased image layer, which was really just getting rid of these two pigeons right here that had blurred out because uh, I don't know how long this was, you know, maybe a half a second or something, but uh, F14 in case you're curious. And that's all my layers and all my work. So the base photo was fairly blue and, you know, to me kind of lacking in punch. Um, and the current version, <laughs> notice I didn't say the final version, um, is very different, right? Very uh, punchy, very orangey. Um, I can see this being like a dramatic sunrise. Um, I mean, you know, knowing all the stuff I put on it, I'm inclined to say it's a little over the top, but in reality, I mean, I feel like I've stood in place, not I didn't see this here because I'm creating this, but I feel like I've stood in places before when you get these really brilliant orange skies and everything turns orange and it's, um, and it's real. So I don't know if this is a surreal edit or just an enhanced reality edit. I, I don't know. Um, call it whatever you want. Um, but that's where I am. Dealing, dealing with indecision is tough because, um, you know, I hate indecision, to be honest. Um, I, I want to know what I'm going to do and then just go do it and get it done. And in this case, I didn't. I spent an hour. This was three or four different sessions where I'd open the Luminar file, screw around, and then close it, you know, save and close it. Um, but I finally decided... That's the one. I think I'm done. So um, I'm going to finish this video and probably go do a couple other tweaks to this photo. Um, you know what I might do now that I'm sitting here? I might go add an adjustment layer and get a vignette. And by the way, um, I don't add layers all the time because uh, in Luminar, because with filter masking, you don't really have to unless you're like putting in a new sky or some other component or uh, a texture, you know, would be a, uh, a layer would be a way to do a texture, although there is a filter for that. But in this case, I kept stacking layers purely because of indecision. Um, and that is, I liked my base layer and I didn't want to get rid of it, but I didn't want to change it. So I added a new layer, so all my changes took place there, um, that sort of thing. Now I might just go add a vignette just to sort of overly uh, uh, do my vignette um, and my edit. So I think I'd do that with a little bit of inner light. I don't know, It's getting. I feel like I'm getting heavy handed. I'm gonna shut up. You have better things to do than sit here and listen to me. I, uh, I hope you don't mind this kind of video. I don't know that it was instructional as much as sort of insight into my process, or in this case, lack thereof. But um, it was fun for me. Uh, I feel like I learned something in the process. And what I learned is get your shit together, Jim, and figure out what you want to do, because otherwise you're going to spend an hour or more on a photo and still not be sure if you like it. Um, and that's kind of where I am. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You have a good day. Uh, comments, feedbacks, likes, shares. Uh, they're all important. By the way, if you're still listening, because many of you hang up uh, after about five or seven minutes of these videos, I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers. I'm doing a little giveaway when I get there. So uh, stay tuned for that. I got a, a six or 700 more to go, but we're getting there. Thanks for being one of them and watching and following along. Have a great day. Take care, my friends, and adios.